Hi everybody. My name is Jason Slocum. I'm a director for product management at Bentley Systems with their iTwin services. And I'd like to thank you all for having me here with you today. Bentley is a leading global provider of software solutions for the infrastructure industry. This infrastructure can include things such as utilities, buildings, industrial plants, bridges, highways, and many of the other physical improvements that you see around you each and every day. So let's start the presentation by talking around a digital twin and just what we would define as a digital twin here at Bentley. Now for infrastructure professionals, we believe a digital twin should be a uh, digital representation of the physical assets and facilities that are in operation. Now ideally these digital twins would be kept up to date and can be used to provide insights and help to improve performance and decision making at the many stages of the life infrastructure life cycle. Now, before I joined Bentley, I actually worked in the infrastructure industry for over 15 years as a licensed civil engineer. I worked on many projects, including highways and water distribution, stormwater modeling, residential industrial site design, and many more. And the one constant as I was starting out in the industry was that most of the engineering design work I was involved with was always focused around 2D paper plans and written specifications of how to build a project. Now these plans would have to be carefully coordinated with engineers and other disciplines such as geotechnical and surveying and then the structural engineers and mechanical electrical architects etc and after carefully constructing those plans and making sure everything was as right or as right as we could get it uh, we'd hand over those 2d plans and specs to contractors and those contractors would go in and manually recreate the same plans off of the 2d inside of their own software in order to be able to bid and construct the project and then at the completion of the project, we would go back through the project and we create what's called a set of as-built plans, which would depict the project as it was actually built, including any of the changes or discrepancies that occurred during construction. And these two, plan, two 2D plans and typically got stored in some kind of a flat file and, and frankly, most of the time never saw the light of day again unless there was a problem. Now, the infrastructure industry has evolved since I started and it has slowly embraced 3D modeling and BIM, which have helped to improve efficiency but there's still a very siloed approach to data, which is often spread across the many engineering disciplines, contractors in their supply chain, as well as the owner operators that are involved in each of these phases. We believe digital twins offer an opportunity to help break down these silos of information and bring them all together to achieve benefits throughout the life cycle of infrastructure. Again, it starts with being able to combine all the data together into a common model, and that can include the engineering data, the operations data, and other information which may be material to the physical asset, such as maintenance and inspection records. This digital twin can then be used to deliver a comprehensive 3D or even an immersive visualization experience to help you better understand just what's happening and even predict what could happen in the future. And all that, of course, leads into better uh, decision making to achieve better outcomes. 4D analysis can go in and help to understand both past and future conditions and that once again can lead into better decision making by being able to predict and schedule what will happen and then we've also seen quite a few advances in ai and machine learning algorithms being applied to digital twins recently and those can help us to both save time as well as identify areas of optimization for that physical asset Now, as I mentioned, there are many stages in the life cycle of an infrastructure project, and they can all benefit from being incorporated into a digital twin. Whether the project starts out as a greenfield project or it's a brownfield project, being able to go in and capture the existing site conditions accurately and incorporate that data into a digital twin can help to coordinate and drive decision making during the conceptual and planning period, a pretty critical period in that uh, the early stages. And then moving into the design and engineering phase, Digital twins can help us to better coordinate between the multiple disciplines that are typically involved, and that helps us provide uh, robust tools for design review where you can actually identify and address issues which historically may have been missed and then result in large delays or costly change orders during the construction. Moving into that construction and commissioning phase, uh, at this phase we can benefit from better scheduling and simulation via the 4D modeling, along with the ability to track the digital twin into the field or take that rather digital twin into the field to better track and manage issues as they arise. And then as the asset is turned over to the owner operator, 
the digital twin can actually be leveraged to track changes over the lifetime of the asset and provo provide feedback whether that be used to optimize operations, help coordinate and track maintenance, or uh, go in and hopefully help you reduce operational costs. Here's an example of some of the items which typically go into a digital twin. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, 2D and 3D design models are still very prevalent in the infrastructure industry and are typically included. Uh, most municipalities maintain robust GIS systems and also keep information relative to rain and subsurface utilities. And we're also seeing a steep rise in the use of drones and photogrammetry to help build robust reality models. All of this can then be augmented with 4D and 5D construction modeling information, IoT sensor data, as well as immersive visualization and asset performance data to help you build up a, a fully comprehensive digital twin. Now again, this, the secret is taking that and aligning the data and being able to bring it together into a common data environment where you have both high fidelity of the original data and are able to also continuously update the data so that it becomes evergreen and it's not stale after, over time. Now the nice thing about this is you don't have to go in and necessarily start with all the layers of data, but rather you can start with the information that you have and then augment that digital twin over time with additional data as you progress throughout the different life cycle stages. The one other thing I want to highlight is this is, you notice we had a kind of a closed loop circle on that previous slide, and that's by intent. This digital twin, you know, you don't just turn it, build it, turn over to the owner and, and say, we're done with life. Rather, you know, that uh, asset, that facility will age over time. You may need to go in and, and do uh, expansions, do rehabs or refurnish parts of the project. So we see that, again, as being kind of a, a ever-living twin, which would go through uh, and, and repeat that life cycle over and over. So let's look at how that all comes together in a, a real example. So this overly complex slide provides you kind of a architecture, if you will, of a project that Bentley recently completed in conjunction with Microsoft to build a reality model for a highway corridor. And then we incorporate IoT sensor data into the model to help improve the operations of the highway. So let's walk through this step by step to review how this actually works and what's actually going on behind the curtain. So let's start by zooming in here on the bottom and looking at the engineering data. And again, this is that engineering data I shared with you before, coming from uh, design analysis software. In this case, uh, it could be bridge software from Bentley. It could be site layout software from a third party. It could be information being brought over from an IFC shapefile or some other interchange format. But the important thing is being able to get that information from all those different uh, verticals and pull them together is, is a key step in getting started with a digital twin. So let's go ahead and, and look at a few snapshots of what that data might look like here of the information that was used. Here we have uh, the bridge. You can see it's a designed bridge. It was designed in Bentley software. You can see we have the uh, piers, the abutments, the bridge deck, guardrails, the roadway, the striping. The whole kit and caboodle was all here designed uh, and ready to be constructed. And then if we uh, advance here a little bit further, you're going to see another section in this case we're looking at a section of the roadway where we're introducing a tunnel and that tunnel once again it's the, the true parametric model of the mo of the tunnel you can see it going into the mountain you can see where we've cut back there so you, what you're seeing on the sides is the cut slope we see the roadway with some fill kind of going on the bottom side so again the, the true engineering model is the starting point for all this digital twin we then take all those different types of information and we need to synchronize it into um, the next stage. So the important part here is we're taking the information and what we're doing is we're creating a bridge between the design application and the iTwin where we are synchronizing, we're bringing all that information to a common data format, a common schema, and we're also being able to track versioning and changes throughout the, the process. So you heard me mention earlier, you know, one of the goals here, we don't want that data to become stack. We want it to be kept up to date. Uh, we also want to be able to go in and audit those changes over time. And so what you're seeing here, each time uh, that bridge is run, it can be done on demand or in a synchronized fashion. We're creating a uh, change record of the model. So we can go in and create versions. 
We can compare those versions, see what changed, why it changed, who changed it, and be able to track that over time. So again, we have an up-to-date model, but we can also kind of turn back the clock and see what's occurred historically. So all that information gets synced into what's called the iTwin Hub. And from that iTwin Hub, we're then able to feed that information into a viewer, in this case, the iTwin Viewer. Uh, our open source iTwin Viewer allows the ability to go in and incorporate information from the iModJS app backends, which is reading from that iTwin Hub that we saw before. We can also marry it up with information from a reality data service, so being able to stream that information in, married up with information from a map service. In this case, we have Bing Maps. And mash all that up together on a front-end application such that you're seeing it all uh, put together and then allow various roles such as project managers, inspectors, operators, uh, BIM managers to all get in and, and interact with that model. So let's go ahead and, and take a look at what that would look like in application. So this is the actual viewer, and we're actually looking at the city of uh, Coffs Harbor in Australia. And they currently have this uh, Pacific Highway running right through the city. And that's all well and good, except for the fact that it results in a lot of congestion in the city. And they decided they wanted to build a bypass of that uh, highway in order to help alleviate the congestion. So again, when we turn back to transparency, you can see that engineering model of the road, the highway is jumping out at us. We can go in and zoom around and inspect that. Uh, so in this case, let's uh, just zoom in on this section of roadway right here. We can put it on a 3D orbit and kind of turn that around. We can actually, that helps us kind of conceptualize what's going on. We can see the fill slopes. We can see the cut slopes. We can see that roadway and the striping all again coming from that engineering model. And then if we kind of turn down the transparency here, we can actually see what's going on with where we've got that Bing map overlaid on the surface and draped with the model all geospatially located. You can see where that roadway is actually cutting through current topography. So it really helps you kind of uh, visualize the change of both the engineering as well as the current conditions. So let's go ahead. We're going to turn the page on this. And what we've done is we brought in the engineering data. We also brought in these physical sensors. So on that engineering model, each of those, we actually had sensors physically placed on the model. And that's what you're seeing here. So we've, we've put some tagging on those sensors. But you can see things such as traffic cameras. Um, I think we have a traffic counter down there. If we go up to the bridge, we've placed a vibration sensor there on the bridge deck. So we can go in and turn that. We can actually see where that sensor's located on the bridge. And then moving into a tunnel, which was kind of the uh, focus of this demo, we can see we've placed a variety of sensor types. Uh, let's see. We'll move that over a little bit. And let's go and look. We've got a uh, temperature sensor here. So we can see what the temperature is in the tunnel. We've got an air quality sensor. We've got some traffic cameras. So again, quite a few ways we can go in there and, and look at what's happening in the tunnel. But again, what we saw on that previous was just the physical representation of sensors. What's important is being able to get that sensor data and bring it in. We're using the Azure IoT Hub for that functionality. And then we are tying in from the iMileJS. We're, we're actually mapping in the schema with uh, the Azure Digital Twin schema in order to be able to populate information from the Azure Digital Twin back into and, and read it with each of those individual sensors. And ultimately, that gets then uh, shown up inside the iTwin viewer, married in much like some of that other reality data and, and big map data was married in. So let's go ahead. We're going to look at what that looks like in application here. So you'll see now, um, we're actually looking at the roadway, and you're seeing sections of that roadway actually turn yellow or green, or you might see it turn red. The reason being is we've taken those sensors, and in addition to just saying, show us what's happening with those sensors, we've attached those sensors to the parts of the as infrastructure assets, such as the bridges, tunnels, and roads. And we can actually see now, um, depending on when certain thresholds and rules are met inside of the Azure Digital Twin service, those will, will change colors as well. So right now we're floating over this air quality sensor. You can see we've got carbon monoxide at under two parts per million. We've got nitrogen dioxide around 25 parts per billion. Uh, down there on the right, we can actually see a temperature sensor turns yellow. And now uh, a minute later, the actual entire uh, tunnel turns yellow. And now uh, we actually see it even learning us saying, hey, we got code red. And we, we zoom in back into that tunnel. We can actually see the tunnels turn red. And again, that's all based off the rules that have been set up inside of the Azure Digital Twin service. In this case, um, we're looking here, we can see the sensor is marked as red as well. And, and 
pretty obvious why that that carbon dioxide you'll note has jumped up from eight parts per million and then even just now jumped up to uh, 11 parts per million so we can go in and, and leverage perhaps the traffic camera to see what's going on get a better sense of, of what's happening and in this case you know we don't have a traffic camera wired in so we can actually just go in and look at a, a, an image for the conceptual side of this and you can see hey we, we got a truck in there that that's uh, jackknifed kind of explains why that carbon dioxide might be going up if that truck's stuck in there it's still running everything's kind of stalled out so we would expect probably air quality sensors would come online start clearing out the carbon dioxide and, and we'd see that start going down but we can also then uh, mobilize operations to go out maybe uh, update electronic billboards saying uh, accident ahead uh, etc and actually if you looked at that you might have missed it but we actually saw that those carbon dioxide levels were starting to come down in real time there Last thing I want to highlight here is the uh, Time Series Insights service from Microsoft. And so as you can see, what we're doing is we're actually feeding information from that Azure Digital Twin service into the Time Series Insights service, which allows us to track not just what's happening in real time, but also go back in and see over the history of the asset what's happened. And much like we married in the sensor data, we've also married in that uh, Time Series Insights data where we can go in, choose a sensor, click on it, and, and be able to bring up a graph adjacent to the 3D imagery showing us the historical information relative to what happened with the sensor. So those are the major steps and building blocks that we had for this project. Again, starting with the engineering data, being able to normalize all that and bring it into the iTwin hub with a common schema, being able to then view that in the iTwin viewer, married in with reality data and big maps data, as well as then tie the sensor data in and marry that into the sensors that physically reside on the different assets. I want to highlight, uh, as I mentioned, it all starts with the engineering design application information on that slide. And we do support a wide range of different types of applications for engineering design and analysis. Those could be Bentley applications. They could be third-party applications. Could be things that are brought across with an interchange format. Or it could even be somebody going in and wanting to build their own custom uh, bridge that would synchronize information from their design application into the iTwin hub. And again, we, we hope to offer an open source library for doing that. We have a couple companies out there today which are actually going in and, and building their own bridges to be able to natively bring their information into this uh, iTwin hub schema. Now, while Bentley is a world leader in providing software for infrastructure, and we offer literally hundreds of applications to support the industry, we also know that there are many custom use cases which we're not going to be able to have solutions for. We've also recognized that it's probably not really practical in this day and age to uh, expect somebody to have a single vendor agnostic approach to be able to manage their infrastructure lifecycle. And these realizations have helped shape our approach to the Digital Twin platform, ensuring that we have an open, Digital Twin environment has been a core caveat of our platform. Now, in addition to providing an open platform for third-party developers to be able to build on and consume our APIs and SDKs, we have also open-sourced our iTwinJS SDK, which contains all the core functionality that a third-party developer would need to be able to go in and build their own digital twin solution. And while we believe that Bentley has much to offer all of these different developers in terms of both our platform and our services, want to highlight they're never going to be locked into that Bentley ecosystem so they don't don't have that risk of getting stuck they can always go in and, and take the service and, and build their own ecosystem uh, outside of Bentley now a few more examples to share with you today uh, once again we're kind of reinforcing what we've done with digital twins the first here is a collaboration that Bentley did with the Cambridge University and the Center for Digital Built Britain as we go in and look at this, it again starts with a big map. We kind of can take that map, we can zoom in to a location here, and we can start seeing where that map has been uh, appended with reality mesh data uh, was captured. We can zoom in, pan around, and actually start moving ourselves into the building and see inside the building now. We, we have a, another reality mesh of the inside of the building. We can scroll around, navigate. And we've also applied machine learning to be able to go in and, and recognize key assets such as pumps and valves and the like. And here we can go in, we can actually pick on a valve. So the valve's been recognized. We can have that valve tied in with uh, performance data, sensor data. So we can see what's going on there. In this graph, we've got some of the K K KPIs relative to what's going on with the pump. 
we can move over to an R view here and, and a dashboard. We can see what's going on there in terms of pump energy consumption, pump flow rate. We can also marry that in with some uh, maintenance and records, see what's happened with that pump historically, be able to manage that from an operation side, uh, just key, key off alerts. In this case, we key off alert for the pump efficiency where we can see the efficient pump was working as expected. And then also, an, hey, alert. Uh, sometime with that pump efficiency curve, we got dropping down and it looks like we have a problem that needs to be addressed. Another good project we've worked on here with Microsoft is around their uh, head, Asia headquarters facilities in Singapore, where we've gone in and looked at the floors of the building that they are occupying. And so we can start here again, got uh, some 3D models appended over top of uh, the Bing data. We can zoom in here to the floors that Microsoft is residing on, bring, click on the floor, bring up some architecture information relative to that floor. We can see the layout. We can go over and, and turn on the power zones, see what's going on there. In this case, we, we uh, are getting a red power zone warning here where there's a window open. Uh, maybe we're, we're not operating at peak efficiency. Do the same thing over here, same general story. Uh, we have a window open that maybe we could close and, and help improve that energy efficiency. So maybe we're, we're blowing our air conditioning right out the window. This project here, Safety Base, is a fun one did with a consortium of engineers uh, or engineering firms, as you see on the screen. And what they've done is build a uh, way of maintaining a risk register around their different assets. So you can see here uh, on the page, we've got stage, we've got the ri initial risk factor, or residual risk factor, as well as a description of the hazard that was occurring. And that's all well and good, but the problem is it's, it's all stored in SharePoint. And there within SharePoint, it's a great way of tracking it. Not really a great way of conceptualizing, understanding what's happening with each of those hatchets, though. And that's where the iTwin came in play. Uh, with the, the iTwin, we were able to go in and bring in the 3D model and marry that up with each of those hazards. So in this case, we can go in, we can create a hazard on the 3D model, have it st stored inside of uh, Safety Base. Likewise, we can actually import any of the different uh, items from the SharePoint, tie them in with the 3D model, and then add tagging to be able to visualize those and actually with the tags, make those intelligent enough to read off of some of these different items and which would control both the type of tag that's displayed as well as maybe the color coding of those tags. So again, a really nice way of, of tying in that SharePoint repository with the 3D model to be able to inspect and visualize where each of those hazards occurs. Uh, this example takes us out a little bit larger, looking at a city scale digital twin. And in this case, uh, we're using it for a few different purposes. Uh, the first could be get into doing some residential planning here. So we can see, we, we can look at the dwellings, the green space, the land use. We can actually go in and look at the sun and see where the shading's occurring there. Uh, we can go in and look at, uh, from a planning perspective, the different zonings. So the zoning districts, the districts by value. So a couple different ways that could be used by city planners. We can highlight points of interest within the uh, city digital twin here. So maybe the infrastructure, Maybe we could look at what's happening below ground and, and the key uh, utilities. And it's also a great way to interact with the residents. So what you're seeing here is a good opportunity for residents to go in and, and uh, raise issues and, and actually locate those issues as well on the map in terms of where they're occurring. So again, a, a great tool for being able to communicate with both the residents as well as city planners and municipal review boards who would ultimately have to be signing off on some of these plans. Last example I have for you today here is a company called VGIS. And what they've done is they've actually created a uh, application for your mobile devices where you can actually go out in the field and, and look around and be geospatially located and see what's happening with utilities both above and below grade. So a great opportunity to uh, help somebody better conceptualize what's happening out there in the field. Now, I mentioned I used to be a civil engineer, and I can remember when I used to work with uh, water owner operators, I'd hear stories about they'd go out there in the middle of the night and have a water leak and they'd be scrambling, trying to find the right plan set that tells them how the water system's laid out, identify where the valves are so they can know which valves to turn off so they, they can isolate that section of pipe without turning off water for everybody else, which is never appreciated. And those valves can be awful hard to find. So you, you first got to find the right plan set to tell you where they are. Then you got to kind of walk around the field and try to orientate yourself. Sometimes those valve stems can be paved over, so you might not be able to find them at all. And a tool like this can really save somebody time when they're trying to uh, quickly react to a problem in the field. So as I wrap up here today, I'd like to uh, leave you with a few thoughts. The first is uh, we have worked with Microsoft and we were on the Microsoft IoT show relative to that highway project I shared with you earlier. 
I'd encourage you to go and, and check that out. It's about an hour long, and it really deep dives into the code step by step of how we integrate with the Azure Digital Twin Service for that example. And I'd also invite you all to come and attend our uh, iTwin Developer Conference here, November 4th and 5th. Great way to hear from industry experts and learn more about digital twin solutions for infrastructure. So with all that said, I'd like to thank you for your time today, and I'd open the floor for any questions.